Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students, today I am going to discuss dissolution of Muslim marriage. This is my seventh chapter and today I would like to discuss different method of dissolution. Before I start this lecture, I just want to introduce myself. So, my name is Dr. Jay Kumar Singh, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Law, BHO. So, today I would like to discuss different methods of dissolution of Muslim marriage and in this lecture, I will try to explain the reason, the logic behind recognition of different methods for dissolution of marriage and the statute which was enacted by the Britishers in 1939 just to empower Muslim women, just to, game, just to give them liberty to repudiate their marriage and the name of that legislation is the Dissolution of Muslim Marriage Act 1939. So, in this lecture I would like to discuss what kinds of methods which Muslim law permits prescribes for dissolving for dissolution of marriage through which Muslim male can repudiate his matrimonial tie, matrimonial relationship and what are the means through which Muslim female can get rid of from her matrimonial relationship and which party to the marriage is in advantageous position with respect to dissolution of marriage, we will try to understand in this lecture. So, with the help of this screen, I would like to explain the different forms of, you see dissolution of Muslim marriage. Marriage can be dissolved either by death of husband or wife, by act of parties. By act of parties, I have classified into three categories, divorce by husband divorce by wife and divorce by <coughs> with mutual agreement. Divorce by husband, husband, Muslim husband, they have got more liberty in comparison to their wives. They can use talaq as a important effective weapon against their wife to repudiate their marriage. Muslim husband can also use ila or jihar to important means to important weapon against her, against his wife. Khula and Mubarak, these two methods are used by husband or by wife with mutual consent and talaqe tafwiz that is another form of dissolution of marriage that is also known as delegated form of divorce. If Muslim husband has delegated this kind of talaq to his wife, then talaqat of which can be used by Muslim female to divorce. And the most important thing is that which I have highlighted uh, in this slide, you can see you, the name the divorce under the dissolution of Muslim marriage act 1939. I, I would like to highlight salient features of this act also one by one. So, I would like to explain this uh, how one by one how this means or method can be used by Muslim husband against their wives. So, now let us take the first method through which marriage can be dissolved by Muslim husband. The most popular and effective 
method to repudiate Muslim marriage that is talaq. Many of you might be aware about this evil word talaq. First of all, I would like to discuss historical background of talaq as I have already highlighted in my previous lecture that talaq is treated as pre-Islamic custom. Talaq was prevalent before the advent of Islam, but Prophet Muhammad made slight modification in this uh, word. He said that the most sinful act is to give divorce to, Mus to Muslim female. No Muslim husband should adopt that method to dissolve his marriage to divorce his wife that it was talaq. But on the other hand, he said that in exceptional circumstances where Muslim husband feels that matrimonial relationship cannot be continued amicably or peacefully and it would be very harmful for the parties to the marriage husband as well as wife to live together, then in that exceptional circumstances Muslim husband should give divorce to their wives. Otherwise, he said that talaq is very sinful act, very heinous act that should be avoided by the Muslims. It should be used. So, you all must understand the preachings of Prophet Muhammad about use of that evil word talaq. Though after his death, it has been seen that many times this evil word has been used by Muslim husband just to give, just to teach lesson to their wives. So, I will discuss uh, the even role of Supreme Court about this, how Supreme Court has taken uh, it serious and considering the gravity of this menace, this talaq, Supreme Court declared it unconstitutional. I will also cover that thing, but here you need to understand first this you see the talaq word lit, that talaq is an Arabic word which literally means to release from matrimonial knot. meaning thereby to release from matrimonial relationship. So, just by pronouncing this evil word any Muslim male can break her matrimony, break his matrimonial knot and can give divorce to his wife. Just by pronouncing this evil word, he cannot take back his promise whether he can take back his promise or not. So, Prophet Muhammad said that Muslim husband should make this pronouncement only once and if after making that pronouncement he wants to repent that Muslim husband wants to re repent himself due to some reason if he wants to take back his promise and has decided not to give divorce to his wife, then he should be given liberty to restore his matrimonial relationship. For that purpose, he approved talaq in two different form, talaq e hasan and talaq e hasan form. I will discuss in coming, in coming session. First of all, I would like to remind you that this talaq word is used by Muslim husband to break their matrimonial relationship. So, any Muslim who has attained the age of puberty has become adult in eye of Muslim law, I mean above 15 years. If he, if any Muslim husband who is above 15 years has acquired sufficient sexual competence can give divorce to his wife by pronouncing this evil word talaq, he can divorce. 
So, at the time of pronouncement that must, that person must be Muslim, he must be of sound mind, he must be sane, he must be in position to understand the nature and consequences of his act, what he is doing, what he is pronouncing. So, he must be of sound mind, he must be sane and law is different for Sunnis and Shia. Shia law requires that if Shia Muslim male is going to give divorce to his wife, if he is making pronouncement, if he is pronouncing talaq, that Shia Muslim male should pronounce talaq in presence of two witnesses, two competent witnesses. So, here you see Shia law requires the presence of witnesses at the time of dissolution of marriage. On the other hand, Sunni law requires the presence of witnesses at the time of marriage. This is difference between these two sects, Sunni sect and Shia sect. So, Shia Muslim male who is giving divorce to his wife, he must pronounce that evil word talaq in presence of two competent witnesses. This is the first requirement for a valid talaq there are certain requirements for a valid talaq, otherwise court may consider it bad and talaq would not be effective unless for Shia Muslims, unless that word is uttered, is spoken by Shia Muslim male in presence of witnesses, first requirement. Second requirement is that, that pronouncement talaq must be specified to that female to whom Shia Muslim male is going to give divorce. Suppose a Shia Muslim male, he has four wives at a time and he wants to give he wants to give divorce to any one of four. So, he must specify the name of that female to whom he is going to give. Otherwise, if suppose for example, if he says that I have given divorce, I have given divorce to you, I have used this talaq to you. So, this this is this is ambiguous statement, this is doubtful ambiguous to whom female he has given divorce, this is ambiguous, this is doubtful. So, no inference can be drawn that to whom he has given divorce. So, in this situation if he has one, if Muslim, if Shia Muslim, if Shia Muslim husband has only one wife and he pronounced that evil word, then inference can be drawn that he that word was only indicated to his wife. Otherwise, in case of <coughs> more than one wife, then the name of wife must be indicated in that uh, to whom he is going to give divorce. This is the second requirement. The third requirement is that if though talaq may be oral or it may be in writing, Muslim law does not prescribe that this evil word should be in a specific format, but if suppose if it is in writing form, then the deed is known as talaq nama, talaq nama. So, you all might be knowing that talaq nama may be the deed may contain some specific content. For example, party may husband and wife they may enter into an agreement, what kind of agreement? Agreement that in case of cruelty, if Muslim husband would commit cruelty against his wife, his wife would be at liberty to give divorce to her husband. This kind of condition may be imposed in a document, this is talaq nama. If in case of after the marriage, if cruelty, domestic violence, physical cruelty, mental cruelty is committed by Muslim husband against his wife. On the basis of the content of that document, talaq nama, she can take shelter, she can file a suit for divorce, dissolution of marriage in the court of law that there was agreement between husband and wife, then in case of cruelty, wife would be at liberty to take divorce from her husband. So, this that document would be that talaq nama would be helpful to that female to take divorce against her husband. Or in case of suppose if for example, they may husband and wife may also enter into an agreement 
that in case of bigamy, if Muslim husband would marry with any other female other than this to whom he is going to marry, in case of second marriage, Muslim wife would be at liberty to give divorce to her husband. And after the marriage, if Muslim husband contracts second marriage, then it would be bona fide ground for dissolution of marriage. With the content of that document, Muslim female would be entitled to get DOS decree from the court and that content, the document would be helpful for her to get rid of from that matrimonial relationship. So, I think you all. So, you see in this way, uh, this if talaknama is executed by husband and wife, then it would always be beneficial for the parties and they can take assistance from that talaknama. So, this is uh, the word talak, but you see how uh, law is different for Sunnis as I said. Even if Sunni Muslim male pronounce that evil word talak in anger or in intoxic in the state of intoxication, even that would be valid for Sunni Muslim male. But in CLO, the word talaq pronounced by a Shia Muslim male who is in, who is intoxicated, who pronounced that evil word in anger would not be effective unless that word is pronounced in the presence of two competent witnesses. So, law is different for these two sects and you must remember these differences. It has always been matter of debate whether talaq should be justified or not. So, as I said, if I have just uh, made another slide, so you can understand this with the help of this slide. I have I have mentioned talaq pre-Islamic custom, as I said it was pre-Islamic custom duly approved by Prophet Muhammad. Talaqul Sunnat approved by Prophet Muhammad, second is Talaqul Biddat irrokeable talaq. One thing which you need to remember that talakul biddat irrevocable talak was never approved by prophet muhammad he approved that kind of talak that kind of method through which marriage can be dissolved could be dissolved and which if uh, parties have decided if muslim has if muslim husband had decided to repent himself to take back his promise he should be allowed. So, that is why he he permitted, he allowed revocable talaq, talaq which can be revoked or talaq which can be taken back, matrimonial relationship can be restored. So, the point which I want to justify that is irrevocable talaq, talaq ke biddat which I have already uh, shown you on this screen talaqul biddat, this talaqul biddat was discovered after the death of prophet muhammad so it was you need to understand this this practice was not at the time of prophet muhammad and he never approved this talakul biddat irrevocable talak so as i said talakul sunnat talak is his sunnat he, why talakul sunnat because he approved talak and that is why talak became sunna prophet muhammad so, talakul sunnat is again classified into two categories talak e hasan and talak hasan. Talak hasan that is treated as most proper form of dissolution of marriage, talak hasan that is proper only. Why talak e hasan is treated as most proper form of dissolution of marriage? The reason behind the logic which they have given talak Ahasan is most proper form of dissolution of marriage because there is sufficient time for what? For Muslim husband to revoke his promise, to cancel his word. Once he has pronounced that word talaq and if he had decided to repent himself, if he had decided to restore his matrimonial relationship, there is sufficient time to cancel his word and he can take back his promise, he can establish relationship with his wife 
and that is why this first form of talaq ke talaqul sunnat is considered as most proper form of dissolution of marriage talaq e hasan ta in talaq e hasan there is a single pronouncement during period of purity uh, you need to understand each and everything muslim husband has to make single pronouncement of talaq during the period of purity that is known as tuhar period so during tuhar period muslim husband has to make single pronouncement what kind of single pronouncement muslim husband has to make pronouncement that he has given talaq to his wife once that word is uttered by muslim husband then and that word must be that talaq word must be uttered or spoken by muslim husband during the period of tuhar during the period of purity tuhar period is that period which is considered from one menstruation period to another mes- to second menstruation period so after when uh, where muslim female is menstru uh, is suffering from menstruation period so uh, the period of one period between two menstruation period is treated as period of tuhar purity period of purity so if that word talaq is pronounced between that period only one single pronouncement talaq is no need to repeat it otherwise it would be treated as sin according to prophet muhammad so where single pronouncement is made by muslim husband during period of purity during period of between period of two menstruation period and after making that pronouncement he doesn't cohabit he does not establish any sexual relationship with his wife then after the expiry of that one month that talaq would be treated as talaq ke ahsan form of dissolution of marriage but you see this one month period is sufficient time and during this period if muslim husband wants to restore his matrimonial relationship he can take back he can make a declaration that now i have accepted my wife if this kind of statement is made then it would be considered that he has cancelled his talaq e hasan and he has taken back his wife so this is you see in this way he can cancel he has sufficient time to to think over his conduct his behavior he has sufficient time to rethink his words his uh, behavior so he can take back his promise but after the expiry of one after the expiry of tuhar period he will lose his right and he and marriage would and divorce would be effective and that divorce would be treated as would be referred as talaq e ahsan form of divorce after that period muslim female will have to observe iddat that is usually muslim has muslim female will have to observe iddat and now the period of iddat as i said talaq has been given then three lunar months and 10 days she will have to wait three three lunar month if she is pregnant at the time of making pronouncement then it will continue the period of iddat will continue till the delivery of child second important thing which you need to remember and after the expiry of iddat period both parties are free particularly muslim female is free to contract marriage with any other person to whom she is willing to contract this is talaq e ahsan form of either muslim husband can either muslim husband may specify that he is giving talaq e ahsan to his wife single pronouncement inference can be drawn 
that he has given divorce to his wife and this is talaq e ahsan form of divorce second is talaq ahsan you see you look at this screen talaq ahsan this is called proper form of dissolution of marriage so <coughs> why it is not so good it is not most proper it is only proper because in this talaq e ahsan muslim husband has to make two pronouncement during period of purity that is why it is called proper not most proper so muslim husband where muslim husband makes two pronouncement pronouncement of talaq during period of purity inference is drawn that muslim husband has given talaq e hasan to his wife so he will have to muslim husband will have to specify the name of name of wife to whom he has given divorce that he has given talaq e hasan to his wife true pronouncement he has made in the presence of witnesses or not in the presence of witnesses if he belongs to sunni sect so all this all these formalities will be done by muslim husband when in when it were when the word talaq would be uttered in presence of witnesses not in the presence of witnesses i have already highlighted so you see this now talaq e hasan word has been used two pronouncement two times talaq has been uttered by muslim husband during period of purity if he establishes cohabits his wife establishes relationship with, with his wife inference can be drawn that he has taken back his promise and he wants to restore his so he even he has sufficient time he has sufficient time to cancel that hasan form of divorce and can can take back his wife again so this is to legitimate valid method for dissolution of marriage which muslim husband can use talaqul biddat as i said this is known as triple talaq this is popularly referred as triple talaq irrevocable talaq by the word it suggests that talaq which is which becomes irrevocable which cannot be revoked which cannot be taken back so where muslim husband pronounces talaq thrice by specifying the name of the muslim female muslim wife so if talaq word is spoken thrice by muslim male then it would be effective soon after making the pronouncement and marriage would be dissolved and that marriage cannot be that marriage matrimonial relationship cannot be restored so you see this is very effective weapon in the hands of muslim men they used to exercise they used to use this effective weapons against their wives just to teach lessons to the muslim female and considering the plight of indian muslim female when muslim husband they started giving divorce triple talaq to their wives just by whatsapp chat or just by email just they they just try they, they just type three words talaq 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 to stating the name of name of uh, wife and if she if he is living abroad or distance is immaterial whatsapp chat if he muslim husband makes whatsapp chat to his wife that now today onwards he today onwards she is not his wife now he has given talaq 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 to his wife triple talaq talaq thrice to his wife even email through email through whatsapp chat they used to give divorce to their wives considering the gravity of this issue supreme court intervened in this matter and in sara bano case sara bano and others versus union of india air 2017 supreme court declared 
ट्रिपल तलाक अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अगेंस्ट द स्प्रिट ऑफ आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी वन ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस आई विल डिस्कस इट इन डिटेल वेन आई एम कम इन कमिंग सेशन यू जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस केस हाउ सुप्रीम कोर्ट कंसिडर द ग्रेविटी ऑफ दिस केस एंड डिक्लेयर दिस ट्रिपल तलाक अनकॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस दिस एंडर फॉर्म ऑफ डिओर्स यू जस्ट दिस इज माई and the slides through which i i am trying to reach to your minds you just look at this ila jihar talaq e tafweez there are three different methods of divorce you need to understand that these are methods through which marriage can be repudiated marriage can be dissolved so ila in ila form of divorce muslim husband has to take oath not to have sexual intercourse with wife for a period of 4 months so you see how ila and jihar these two forms of divorce you need to understand where muslim husband has decided not to have sexual relationship with his wife with his wife up to the period of 4 months muslim husband says that i will not establish any sexual relationship with you up to 4 months and if he does so he, he doesn't he doesn't establish relationship with his wife up to 4 months after the expiry of 4 months in prince law presumes that muslim law presumes that has muslim husband has given divorce to his wife and this divorce is ila form of divorce means inference is drawn that muslim husband has used ila ila technique to give divorce to his wife so these are technique method through which marriage can be repudiated by muslim husband you need to remember that this all these methods cannot be used by muslim female these methods these weapons can be used by muslim husband against muslim wife effective weapon weapon here means means a method so ila form in ila form of divorce muslim husband may say that today onwards he will not establish sexual relationship with his wife up to 4 months after the expiry of 4 months marriage would be dissolved in eye of muslim law and law muslim law presumes that muslim husband has given ila form of divorce after 4 months muslim wife will have to observe iddat and the procedure regarding observance of iddat i have already highlighted that what would be the procedure what would be the time how iddat period would be counted ithna isharia female will have to get decree from the court only then marriage in ithna isharia law after the expiry of 4 months marriage would not be dissolved iso facto automatically so if muslim female if muslim women belongs to ithna isharia siya sect and she has been given divorce ila form of divorce by her husband then after the expiry of 4 months she will have to file a suit for dissolution of marriage in court of law where she will have to establish the fact before the court that husband has given ila form of divorce to her so divorce, so decree should be passed in favor of her so that she can live separately and she can get maintenance and all these things under the law so without getting decree from the court the marriage would not be dissolved in ithna isharia law you all need to understand ithna isharia law is different on this point as i said after division of islam islam divided into two sects sunni sect shia sect sunni has four ideologies again sunni sect divided into four sub sect and shia sect divided into three sub sect so here ithna isharia majority of indian shias belong to ithna isharia so if it happens in india and muslim female belongs to ithna isharia sect then she will have to get decree from the court only then marriage will be dissolved otherwise marriage would not be dissolved 
only after expiry of 4 months. So, if uh, before the expiry of 4 months consummation takes place, Muslim husband establishes sexual relationship with his wife, inference would be drawn in favor of marriage that Muslim husband has cancelled his ila form of divorce and has decided is willing to live together. So, it would be a kind of restoration of matrimonial relationship. Second form of divorce is jihar, jihar form of divorce. You see the, the jihar is Arabic word which literally means comparison of wife with such a female who comes within prohibited degree of relationship. Jihar, you see on screen jihar and talaq e tapweez. In jihar form of divorce, Muslim husband has to compare his wife with such a female who comes within prohibited degree of relationship. Prohibited degree of relationship here means mother, sister or and so on. So, where Muslim husband compares his wife with such a female who comes within prohibited degree of relationship, it means that he has given divorce to his wife by way of jihar form of divorce. So, this kind of inference is drawn Muslim law presumes that Muslim husband has given jihar form of divorce to his wife. For example, you can understand this in better way where Muslim husband says that his wife looks like his mother or he, today onwards his wife looks like his sister and I will not establish any relationship with his wife. If this kind of statement is made by Muslim husband, Muslim law presumes that Muslim husband is willing to divorce his wife and what means what method he has adopted against his wife? The method is jihar form of divorce. He has used jihar form of divorce against his wife. So, this kind of inference can be drawn if Muslim husband has compared his wife has made pronouncement in presence of witnesses that from today his wife looks like his mother, he, from today his wife looks like his sister. So, law, Muslim law presumes that he has given divorce to his wife and the way the method which he has used to give divorce to his wife that is jihar form of divorce. So, I think you all have understood. Now, come to talaq e tafweez and the form of divorce that is talaq e tafweez. You see on this, you see on your screen talaq e tafweez also known as delegated talaq. Delegated talaq why it is called the delegated talaq? Wife can also be delegated talaq by her husband that in such and such situation wife would be at liberty to give divorce to her husband. So, even even you see neither ila nor jihar nor talaq can be uttered can be spoken by Muslim female Muslim women cannot pronounce this cannot use these methods they are strictly prohibited. The fourth important thing is that even in talaq e tafweez she cannot give divorce to her husband unless she is delegated that right by her husband to that female. So, talaq e tafweez is delegated form of talaq and Muslim husband at the time of marriage or even after the marriage can delegate his power of talaq to his wife that in case of cruelty, in case of bigamy or in case of any matrimonial fault, matrimonial wrong, his wife would be at liberty to give divorce to her husband. So, if this kind of power is delegated, if the if talaq is delegated by her husband to his wife, then only then she can use talaq e tafweez and she can give divorce to her husband. So, you can see that she has no independent right to give divorce to her husband, 
she is bound to live with her husband to whom she never wants to live and she never wants she, she never likes so even in this in 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 each and every situation you can see that muslim men they are in advantageous position uh, with the help of this i try to explain this and the next one is you just look at this dios there are two other methods for dissolution of marriage khula and mubarat so again i would like to discuss these two important methods to repudiate to dissolve the marriage in detail so as i said talaq e tafweez that is a valid form of divorce dissolution of marriage even in us you see even in this form of dissolution of marriage muslim female cannot use this effective means against her husband to whom she is not willing to live without authorizing without giving authority of her husband she cannot use this means this method so has muslim husband can delegate this power either to his wife or anybody else you see the irony of this act is either muslim husband ki can give power to his wife to give divorce or he can give this authority to anybody else to uh, divorce to give divorce to him either muslim female or any other person may also pronounce talaq on behalf of muslim female that by saying that this power was delegated by her husband so only because of that because of that authority i have pronounced that evil word and this so you see either muslim female muslim wife can use this or anybody else can pronounce talaq on behalf of muslim female that is talaq e tafweez so talaq e tafweez delegated form of divorce I say, Ila and Jihad to other methods. Now, there are two important methods for dissolution of marriage. That is, khula or mubarat. Khula or mubarat. These are two important. Uh, you can see this on your screen. Khula literally, khula is an Arabic word, which literally means. take up the clothes to relieve the burden from the body you can say but literally means to uh, take up the clothes so as a human being can put off his clothes from his body similarly muslim female can take initiative to get rid of from matrimonial relationship just by just by providing compensation to her husband she can re, you see in khula form of divorce she can make a request to her husband that she is not willing to live with you and if she makes a proposal before her before her husband that she is not willing to live with you so only this statement is not will not break their matrimonial relationship she will have to she will have to pay something in lieu of that promise in lieu of in e, 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 for breaking that matrimonial relationship so where muslim married women makes a proposal before her husband that she is not willing to live with you and you relieve her from this matrimonial tie matrimonial relationship what amount he will take what if uh, she is ready to pay any amount for that if you relieve her from this matrimonial relationship if there is an agreement between this between two then muslim husband after accepting 
after receiving some money or property for what in lieu of that divorce he can after receiving that amount or after receiving that property muslim husband can relieve his wife from matrimonial burden matrimonial relationship so this form of divorce is known as khula form of divorce usually muslim wife has to initiate the proceeding of khula that she is not willing to live with you and you take this money you take this property and relieve me from this matrimonial relationship if husband is ready to accept that amount or to accept that property after accepting that property husband can relieve muslim wife his wife from matrimonial relationship and law presumes that inference is drawn that muslim husband has used khula form of divorce after accepting some money or property what happens usually in khula form of divorce muslim female has to surrender her dower in meher in favor of her husband so she may relinquish her claim in favor of husband by saying that now she would not claim her dower against her husband if he if her husband relieves her from matrimonial relationship she would surrender her claims in favor of husband so this kind of step this kind of technique method in islam is called ila form of divorce and after giving divorce muslim wife will have to observe iddat and after observing iddat after the expiry of iddat period muslim wife is free to marry with any other male to whom she desires so this is ila form of divorce now come to mubarat form of divorce this is also well recognized form of divorce through which muslim husband can give divorce to his wife these two methods are used by husband or by wife with mutual consent you need to understand that if muslim ultimately muslim husband's desires prevails if muslim ultimately muslim husband it ultimately it is the muslim husband who decides whether marriage whether divorce should be given or not even in khula or mubarak form you see even in khula form of divorce if muslim husband is not willing to give divorce to his wife then she cannot get divorce decree from the court on the ground of khula so compensation is always paid by muslim female muslim female has to pay something for uh, breaking her matrimonial relationship this is khula form of divorce now come to another form of divorce that is known as mubarat mubarat is also considered as divorce by mutual agreement because in in mubarat form of divorce any party to the marriage either muslim female or muslim husband muslim male can initiate that he or she is not willing to live with his wife or husband so anyone can take anyone can initiate the proceeding can start can initiate the step that he or she is not willing to live with such a male or female as a husband and wife and due to agreement due to consent mutual agreement they can live separately but question may arise that if talaq is prevalent if talaq is available then in then what is the use of khula or mubarat it has only academic relevance these two methods 
of divorce have become outdated. It, these two methods have only academic relevance in present context. Why? Because no Muslim would like to linger on the process, no Muslim male would like to delay the process. If he has already, if he has already effective method to give divorce to his wife and he just by pronouncing talaq, if he can repudiate, if he can give divorce to his wife, uh, if he can repudiate his matrimonial relationship just by pronouncing that talaq, so why he would like to use ila or jihar or this other form of divorce. So, you can imagine if talaq is available in the hands of Muslim male, then why they will use these other methods which may take time to repudiate the marriage. So, this, this, this is another important aspect of dissolution of marriage which you need to understand. So, all I think after this thorough discussion, you all must have understood the methods through which Muslim male can repudiate his marriage. Now, I am going to discuss that important aspect of dissolution of marriage, which Muslim female can use against their husbands. So, in 1939, after considering the gravity of this Minas, British government enacted a special legislation, enacted a special law for the betterment of Muslim women. The name of that legislation is the Dissolution of Muslim Marriage Act 1939. So, by that legislation, an effort was made by Britishers to empower, to give effective method to Indian Muslim women, so that by using, by using the methods prescribed in this act, even they can repudiate their matrimonial relationship if Muslim females are not satisfied with their husband. Before the comments, one thing which I need to, uh, which you need to remember that before the commencement of this act 1939, Muslim female had no independent right to give divorce to their husband. So, credit goes to this special legislation, which empowered Indian Muslim women and Muslim women became more powerful after the commencement of this act. So, section 2 of this act is very important. Section 2 has 9 grounds, any which gives liberty to the Indian Muslim women to get divorce decree from the competent court just by establishing any one of 9 ground before the court of law. If she has succeeded in establishing any one any one of the nine ground prescribed in section 2 of this act, she may get DO's decree from the court. After getting DO's decree from the court, she can live separately and she can marry with any other male to whom she desires. So, I, uh, I would like to discuss some important some important provisions of the dissolution of Muslim marriage act 1939. You just look at this. Now, you can see on your, on your screen that what is the beauty of this act? The beauty of this act is the provision of this act can only be availed by Muslim female. Muslim men, Muslim male or Muslim men, they cannot use they cannot get the benefit of this legislation. So, this is another important uh, thing which you need to remember. So, I have also I, I have al also highlighted two important case laws Muhammad Ahmad versus Sabano case and Shara Bano versus Union of India AIR 2017 case to which I will discuss in 
now you see how what are it, it would be very it would be pertinent to mention those 10 grounds which are enumerated in section 2 of this act which would be very beneficial for you that you 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 are also needed you 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 must know that what are those grounds on which muslim female can get your degree against her husband so the first the first ground enumerated in this act the muslim uh, the dissolution of muslim marriage act is where Mus where husband is missing for more than 4 years where muslim husband is missing for more than 4 years muslim female is entitled to get dios decree against her husband what she what will she do she will have to file a suit for dissolution of marriage under the dissolution of muslim marriage act 1939 she will have to prove before the court that her husband is missing for more than 4 years and where about of her husband is not known to anybody else to whom he must have been heard within 4 years so if court is convinced court may pass a decree in favor of that muslim female second important ground is that where Muslim husband has failed to provide maintenance to his wife for more than two years, where Muslim husband is not providing financial assistance to his wife for more than two years, it would be a bona fide ground for her to get Dio's decree against her husband. If uh, husband has been convicted by a competent court for more than 7 years, it would be bona fide ground for Muslim female to get decree from divorce decree from the court. So, the one important thing which you need to remember that the conviction must be confirmed by the apex court. If suppose if appeal is pending before that conviction, Muslim female and conviction is more than about more than 7 years imprisonment that an accused has made an appeal in higher court, matter is pending, appeal is pending before the court and see Muslim wife has come before the court seeking divorce against her husband, court, court will not pass decree in favor of that female because that conviction must be confirmed by the apex court by the final court. So, you need to remember this thing. So, you see these are husband if husband is important so on ground of importancy muslim female is entitled to get divorce so you see these are several grounds or where muslim husband has failed to perform matrimonial obligation so inability to perform matrimonial obligation importancy these are the grounds on which muslim female is entitled to get divorce decree under the dissolution of Muslim Marriage Act 1939. But it is very important to mention the name of case Sarah Bano versus Union of India IIR 2017 and so in this case Supreme Court declared triple talaq unconstitutional on the ground of violation of article 21 of the Indian constitution because Supreme Court considered triple talaq as a degrading uh, which degrades the dignity of Muslim female on that basis Supreme Court declared triple talaq unconstitutional and now this triple talaq has become offence by that legislation. So, I think I do believe that you all have understood the things which I have just discussed in this lecture talaq and different forms of dissolution of marriage talaq ila jihar khula mubarat talaq e tabwiz talaq e hasan and hasan form of divorce logic behind recognition of these methods and the relevance in indian context and i with this i would like to conclude this lecture thank you